So welcome back friends to the shop. How about we talk a little bit about EDC pocket knives today. So as you guys know who have followed the channel that I have uh, the, the, the knife, my favorite knife, the knife I've considered to be for me, uh, the best EDC knife ever made is the Benchmade 940 Osborne. I've carried that knife, two of them, for 12 years. 12 years every day in my pocket, living with it in all sorts of environments, cleaning fish, cutting rope, uh, opening paint cans, all those things, and it never has let me down. I think it's one of the most beautiful designed, um, wonderful knives, and, and just, uh, uh, just a pleasure to own um, that I have ever had uh, of my whole life carrying knives. So, unfortunately, I lost it. Uh, Mrs. W bought me a Benchmade, what, maybe a year ago, if that. I had a year and I lost it. And, and that was it. I have, I, I think when I think, when I, or when I look back, I have probably lost a dozen Benchmade knives. And this one was the last one. If I said to myself, I think I even said in a video, if I lose this knife, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm not, buying, I'm not buying any more expensive knives. I'm going to buy cheap knives and that's it. That way it just doesn't break my heart when I lose them. So on the eve, on the very precipice of uh, me sharing with you uh, the best EDC, the best cheap EDC knife that I could come up with, what do you think happened? Well, last night it was two in the morning. The fire pager went off and of course all of us, we grabbed our stuff. Uh, headed up to a, a fully involved structure fire, an, an apartment building uh, was on fire. So I was, uh, I, I was, uh, had my bunker gear on and I was uh, uh, scrambling around and I, and I had a, I was trying to get a, a hose uh, that was, uh, I couldn't get a hose broke off, the fitting was too tight. I keep in my cargo pocket, uh, my bunker gear. Let me show you here. Well, I'm not gonna show you because it's too deep. In the, I, I keep a, a wrench. It's a wrench that I can use. Uh, it's a combination wrench I can use to cut seat belts and all of that. Uh, it's just a handy tool, but I, I was looking for that tool to break those couplers open so I could get these hoses swapped around. What do you think I found in the cargo pocket of my bunker gear? Yeah, that's right. The Benchmade 940 that Mrs. W bought for me that was, had gone missing. I was ecstatic. I'd completely forgotten all about my, my, my woes of getting up for a fire at two o'clock in the morning. And I was on cloud nine all the way home. So happy, so happy to have it back. I was so careful trying to keep this one that I had, uh, I'd even taken the pocket clip off. No more pocket clips for me. I'll just carry it in my pocket old school style like granddad hat did. And I thought I'll have that knife forever. How I thought I lost it. And the reason why I didn't search around in my gear is I wear these, uh, these pants I wear are the, these American roundhouse. I like them better than Carhartts. They're USA made and they fit me better, but I wear them all the time. And I'd reached in to grab my pocket, my, my pocket knife and realized there was a hole in my pocket. Somehow there was a hole in my pocket and it dawned on me right there. My knife's not in my pocket. There's a hole in my pocket. It's gone. That's it. That's my last Benchmade I'm ever going to buy, but it wasn't, it wasn't. So, when I think back at the times I lost my other 940, it's when I got out of my routine. When you get out of your routine, especially like, and that's what happened to me with the fire thing is I, I must've went to the fire, to a fire call. I'm like, I might be needing that knife and I, and I put it in there and I completely forgotten about it. When I lost my last 940 is when I did that climb for my buddy of mine to do a tree topping. And I remember taking that knife out and, and because I had switched pants or I was trying to empty my pockets, it was because of I was wearing a harness, got out of my routine and that's what happened. So, very happy to have that back, but I had found a really great EDC knife that I want to share with you that is, what, $15, $13? Sometimes you can find them on Amazon that I have been carrying around, carrying around that I've really fallen in love with. So now I'll share this with you, but one of these is going to be a dedicated knife in my bunker gear. This is going to stay in my, my street clothes, so not to be lost again. So let me bring you in close to, uh, and show you what I consider to be a great, great value in a, on a New Zealand built knife uh, that I have just come to adore. Here it is. Kind of a crazy looking thing, isn't it? This was sent to me a couple years ago uh, by one of my subscribers and I, I, didn't, I, 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 I didn't know what to think of it. I, I, I messed around with it a little bit, and, but I, you know, I had my good knife, I had my bench made and I, and I put it away and I didn't think too much of it. I thought, oh, that's kind of an interesting novelty there. But once I lost my, you know, of course I lost my 940, um, I said, where did that old knife go? I started digging around like I'm going to have to, that's going to be my new carry. I knew that they were pretty highly regarded 
and they were very affordable. This is a, um, this is a peasant knife. It's called a peasant knife. It's from New Zealand. Um, it's called it's a Svord, S-V-O-R-D. You can see the stamp and the high carbon blade right there. And I've never seen anything like it. It's just a very non-pretentious, wonderful knife. It is a one-hand opening knife, but it doesn't lock. But I think the price on these things, the last time I checked, I think it was, you could have these for $14. And what I liked about this was it, it carries really good in the pocket and having that crazy tang that sticks up there, it's easy to grab. You can reach in and you can pull it out. You can always get a nice purchase on it. And the way that it opens is really wonderful. It's, uh, it's, it is a true one hand opening knife. It takes a little bit of practice, but it just is a friction lock. There is no lock on there and that the way that 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 little tang hangs out there um, as you perch, as you hold the knife, it uh, keeps it from opening. It's really a wonderful design. I had one complaint about it though, is and that was it was it was just too big. I kept trying to carry it. I love the concept of it. I love the idea. I love the uh, just the where it came from and the story about it and the carbon uh, the high carbon blade held such a wonderful edge. It feels wonderful in the hand. It's just, it's just an easy, nice knife to carry around, but it was too big. It was too big in my pocket and it bothered me to no end. And I would carry it, I wanted to, I wanted to like it, but it just wouldn't let me. And so I, I started looking around for something else. Then I found it. It was so simple. It's the same knife, but they make a little one. I had no idea. This is the mini sword, which is, a, an exact, basically an exact copy of the, of the large size one, but a more manageable size. This is perfect. And this is the one that I was carrying up to the point where I, you know, I found my bench made and I really liked it. Look at the, look at the way it fits the hand. Look how much smaller it is. It's, it's thinner. This melts into the pocket. It weighs absolutely nothing. It's a charming knife and it takes a wicked, wicked edge. And I think I paid for this on Amazon. I think it was $13, $13 shipped for this beautiful little EDC pocket knife, something that I could carry around. It's not made in China. You know, some of those knives that you, you get, yeah, you can buy some, some nice folding locking knives that are kind of replicas or duplicates of Benchmade's or Spyderco's and all of that. But the fact that they're made in China, it, it, it bugs me. And I'm, I know I'm going to be called a racist. Anytime I say I don't like something that's poorly made in China, that means I'm a racist and, and whatever. We're all, everyone's racist. Now you've destroyed that word. It has, it's meaningless now. Uh, so it's not racist. I just don't like crummy quality. And what's cool about this is for 14, 13, 14, 15 dollars, you get a knife made in New Zealand from the Kiwis. And who has, have you ever met a Kiwi that you did, did, didn't just love when you met? Or an Australian for that matter. They're all just wonderful people. Wonderful people, made in New Zealand, and uh, a simple, non-pretentious, wonderful, interesting EDC knife. Good luck finding a knife. It's going to be as, as fun to own and to play with, and that gives you that joy of ownership uh, like this one. The only other thing that comes into mind that I have that's in, even similar are the, the French knives, the little op open L's, open L's, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. Those are wonderful little knives too. However, they're not one hand opening, and that to me was, is the reason why I don't carry one. Mrs. W, by the way, that's what she carries in, in her purse, and she likes it. But I, I, I need a one-hand opening knife. If, I, if I've got something, you know, that I'm, I'm holding a piece of rope or something, and I want to pull this knife out of my pocket, I, I need to be able to open it up so I don't let go of my work, and I, can, and I can cut that. We all know that, right? So excellent, excellent little knife. I thought, you want to take it apart and see what's inside? Now buy your own and, and see what's inside. There, there's just not that much to it. It's uh, got two brass screws right there. If you want to change the friction, of how, how tight it grips. You simply tighten or loosen that right there. Those nice brass screws. It's got a super durable handle that's never gonna break on you. Wonderful. You could get two or three of these and, and throw them around in different areas. If you're a firefighter or a police officer or, or you wanna have something in the glove box in case you lose your knife, I think it, it, I just think the world of them, especially that little one. This one for me is too big to carry. I think it's gonna be too big for most people to carry unless you're carrying it in a sheath or a cargo pocket, but who does that? You know, that's uh, no one that knows anything about knives. Uh, <laughs> but the one you want is the, is the little mini one right there. That's, the, that's where it's at. Just can't believe it. Can't believe you can make such a nice little EDC knife for such a reasonable price, uh, all the way from the great land of New Zealand. 
All right, that's it for my EDC knife review. I'll put an Amazon affiliate link uh, to uh, the little one. If you like, think you like the big one, you know that you, maybe that would be a better fit for you. But I think I'd recommend this one here. They come in all different colors. Uh, they're they're just fun. They're fun knives, and uh, who doesn't have an extra 10, 15 bucks for a good EDC knife? Heart racer, I guess. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.